What do you pack for a camping trip that lasts three nights and two days? Keep watching to find out what I will be packing for my three-day camping trip or glamping trip with my family this weekend. And then after the weekend, I'll come back and show you what I actually knit. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 41 of the Thoughtfully Made Fiber of Cast. My name is Amy Sher and I am your host. I am a knitting pattern designer, sewist, and sometimes spinner and weaver living in St. Louis, Missouri. So earlier this year, my family and I went glamping for the first time, glamorous camping for those who do not know. And we rented a little cabin, a container cabin, out in the middle of the woods, about 45 minutes away from St. Louis. And we had such a good time that we decided to go back uh, to the very same spot this week. So tomorrow we'll be leaving for our little trip and I've been here busily working out what we're gonna pack for this trip for my knitting, of course. So if you've ever gone camping or glamping or any kind of vacation, you know that there's often downtime where we like to knit and what we normally have in our at-home projects might not necessarily be suitable for these camping or glamping projects. So I've buckled down and nailed down my options and today I'm gonna to show you everything that I'm packing, how I'm packing it, and then after our trip, I'll show you a little bit of footage from the trip, and after I get back from our trip, you'll see the progress that I actually made. So I'll put on some progress markers after I film this video and we'll see like the truth of how much a person can actually knit over the weekend. So last time I went on a camping trip, I actually made quite a lot of progress over the course of a two night trip, three days, I actually knit um, like one and a half sleeves on my friendship pullover, which I'll put here. So the sample for the friendship pullover was partially knit uh, while we were on vacation. And that was super fun, um, very easy knit, not much to think about. Um, plus I was on the sleeves. So I think sleeves are a great choice for travel knitting because they're so compact and they pack away easily. Um, this time around, I have a lot more <laughs> whips on the needles. So I think this is what I'm gonna pack. So the first project that I think I'm gonna bring with me are these hand spun socks that I cast on a couple days ago. I'm actually not sure I'm doing the right size yet because with hand spun, I feel like you won't really know if you like the gauge or the fabric for a while, but um, this is what I have so far, the toe and a little bit of the foot, a couple rows really beautiful color so I spun up this yarn probably over the summer or maybe earlier this year as kind of like a palette cleanser between other larger project spins and I often do that I do these like smaller spinning projects that are just one braid uh, between the bigger projects so I finished up a bigger project the 12 days of spinning um, advent from Ingle McFibers earlier this year in like February it took me way longer than 12 days and because I'm easily distracted. And then I jumped into this one before I jumped into my big summer project, which is still not done yet. So um, yeah, it's been languishing in my cabinet all year. And typically when I spin for socks, I immediately cast it on. So this is long past due. Um, and I'm wearing holes through all of my socks really quickly because I'm very hard on my hand knit socks. So it was time. Uh, this is a traditional three-ply DK weight um, fiber from Wound Up Fiber Arts, which I'll put in the description box below, as well as everything else um, that I have a link for. I'll put that in there. But some of these whips are for patterns that are not out yet. Okay, so I'll be packing that in this cute little sock project bag. It says, Lama Stay Home and Knit which is just how I feel about this glamping trip. We're just probably gonna stay in the cabin and chill out the entire time without doing very much activity at all, which is my preferred way of vacationing. Um, yeah, I'm pretty active at home and I walk my kids to school twice a week and I go to dance class twice a week. So when I'm on vacation, I just wanna like vegetate. And I'm gonna be packing all of it in this huge project tote from Flock Fiber Festival, which I got over the summer. It's a great project tote and I need more totes like the size of this because my projects are large due to me knitting so many large sweater and unspun products. So before I get into the next thing that I'm gonna pack, I just wanna mention quickly that I'm only planning to bring one sweater, 
when I go camping, I'm not like a fussy person, even though I actually hate camping, which is why we're going glamping. Um, but I'm not fussy. I'm probably just gonna wear like, like two sets of base layers plus my coloring book raglan sweater, which I wore last time in March when we went glamping and I expect the weather to be pretty similar temperature wise. So that is my one sweater option. Um, it's clean and fresh from my spring cleaning and I just pulled it out from storage. And I'm really glad, I'm really excited to be wearing the coloring book raglan again for the cold weather season. I will put a picture of the coloring book raglan uh, in knitted in yarn over here or here somewhere so that you can see what it looks like. But that's kind of like my camping sweater now. And of course I'll be bringing two or three pairs of, um, of hand knit socks, which I walk and hike, whatever, and I'm very hard on my socks. I'm not precious about them at all, but that's basically what I will be packing. Um, I also need to knit myself a hat and I just like have not gotten around to it yet. So other than samples for my business, I actually don't have any hats except for the sportswear Mana hat that I knit a while back. But the Mana hat got worn with, or got washed with some hand spun mittens that bled all over it. So the colors are all muddled and I'm really sad about it. Every time I wear it, I get really sad about it. I still do wear it to keep myself warm when it gets really cold, but I think I need to knit something else that's not so depressing. <laughs> so that's kind of like on my list of like things I need to think about for next time I go camping. Anyway, let's get into the next whip. I recklessly cast on a new project. And if you follow me on Instagram, I recklessly cast on a new project. And if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you will have seen this before. It is using rainbow sherbet from the wandering flock. Um, from when I knit my effervescent pullover for Pom Pom magazine, which I'll put here and also a link to the now independent pattern um, below. But when I knit it, I requested extra yarn as I always do because I'm terrified of running out of yarn. And this being single ply, um, this is the yarn that was chosen for me, but it being single ply, I was worried that um, if I made errors or I had to redesign something and I frogged it, I would not have yarn to use because it might be too damaged in frogging. That's a lot of words to say I got extra yarn. So I ended up with, um, a cropped sweater and I ended up having quite a bit of extra yarn left over um, about 60 grams in this ball which I've used some of and then 100 grams here and I've decided to cast on a matching effervescent pullover for my kid Clara so here is what I have so far I'm almost done with the body already this is in the size I think 3T, 4T, one of those. This is in size three or four. Um, I sat down and graded it last week and cast it on and it's been super fun. The color pulls up a little bit differently, like more frequent pulling on this little itty bitty size. I am not alternating yarn because I only have two skeins. And I think because of the lace work, um, I have enough yarn to get through the body. And then once I get to the lace work and the sleeves, I think it'll be fine to use a separate skein since they're like different parts. And anyway, on my first effervescent pullover, I also like recklessly did not alternate yarn and it turned out beautifully. I didn't need to alternate yarn. I think Geraldine at the Wandering Flock is so good at what she does. Um, yeah, my hot take is that with Geraldine's yarn, you do not need to alternate. So that is what I have going on. Um, I'm still debating if I should bring it to camping because, well, I guess I still have the sleeves that's knit bottom up and I obviously have a body. So if I knit the sleeves, which I'm planning to knit full length instead of elbow length, like the um, adult version. Um, if I bring the sleeves and I knit two sleeves real quick, then it'll be ready to join when I come home. But I don't really want to be knitting like in the round lace yoke while I'm on vacation. That seems like a lot of work. So easy knitting only. So 
So that is the second project that I'm gonna bring. My goal is to finish the body and finish the sleeves and one of the socks that I just showed earlier. And finally, a work project that I have to bring even though I don't wanna bring it. This is an unnamed pullover. I cannot share too much about it yet. Um, but it is knit from Hinterland range. It looks like a mess right now because it's not been blocked and it's like not at all finished. It's just like a chunk of it. Um, it looks like this so far. Uh, I didn't plan on bringing this to camping. However, I messed up on the color work. It was not properly centered. Um, actually, it's like an uncenterable color work due to the way the stitches work out. But I wanted the edges to be neat. I didn't want there to be like like one or two columns on each side from Marie P that looks hideous and cut off on the sides. Um, it has like a plain knit section on the sides. So I got like two inches into the color work and I regretted everything. So I frogged it all, rewrote the pattern for this part, centered everything in every size to make sure it's still workable. Um, had to do some pretty grody math to make it happen. Um, it's hideous, like the spreadsheet is horrible, but I think it's gonna look really nice on each size um, independently. I basically had to make like some tough choices in every single size to make it work. The color work is now properly centered. The edges are nice, they're neat. Um, we will be knitting all of the color work again and hopefully get this thing into testing. Because of that, and because um, I've actually knit this pullover twice already, because I knit almost all of it up to the color work, and then I realized I forgot to count my stitches, and the stitches for the front yoke before drawing and the back yoke before drawing were all wrong. Like, I'm on my last spring, so y'all, I don't know what's going on with me. Like, like something about the change to fall and seasonal allergies got me. I am fighting for my life when it comes to my knitting. Everything feels extra hard. Anyway, so I've already knit the yoke and part of the body once. Frogged it all, knit it again. Now I'm on the second one. Frog part of the color work and working on it again. And I'm like a week behind schedule on this deadline and I gave myself a pretty hard internal deadline so that I could get it into test and give testers plenty of time to work on it. So with that, I think I'm gonna have to bring it on this trip, which I really didn't wanna do because it's a larger, more complex project. I'm gonna have to like print out the color work chart, work on it on vacation, and it's just not what I wanted to do. But um, the color work is quite engaging and really fun to do, so I don't mind too much. It's just that I really wanted to make some more progress on the kid sweater that I showed. Um, plus, another thing I've discovered is that as my joints get worse um, during weather changes, they're starting to hurt. I think I might have like a little bit of arthritis in my joints because now that the weather has cooled down, my joints hurt a lot when I work on like particularly rustic and wooly projects like this sweater. Um, it's knit from Hinterland Range, which is wonderful yarn. I love it. It is 50% alpaca and 50% rambule, I believe, Canadian rambule. And it's like a beautiful fa rustic alpaca farm yarn and it's super warm, wool and spun, blooms out beautifully, creates beautiful lightweight fabric, everything I love. However, it is very sticky, so when I knit with it, it is a little bit more work than Superwash Hern to slide her along the needle. And I've been knitting it on like ergonomic needles, which may be a mistake, like because they're ergonomic square needles. Um, they're these square needles by Addy. Um, they might actually be like not slidey enough. So, and I don't have the needle set in like a the regular round turbo shape and even though i own a lot of needle sets my hands really hurt so i think i might need to get the regular needle sets for when the yarn is like particularly sticky which is a lot of needle sets um i love adding needles but i already own two sets the square long and the square shorties so thinking about ordering another set even though it's for work and my hands are like in pain it's just a lot. Anyway, that's my third project that I'll be packing and I will report back after we get back from our trip and tell you what I actually knit on these. 
Um, my prediction is that I actually won't make as much progress on these as I think. Um, last time I was quite productive, but like I'm on vacation, who cares? Like if I don't, if I'm not a productive knitter on vacation, then it is what it is, it's fine. Um, the other thing that I wish I could bring, but I can't, is my spinning. There is so much spinning that I wanna do that I have not been able to do because of this deadline. And I don't have a wheel that's portable and I'm on the wait list for a Daedalus wheel um, that comes battery operated that could have worked. But unfortunately, I've been on the wait list for months and months and months. And I think they are actually quite busy preparing for running back and they won't be able to make the wheels that I want for a long time. Like there hasn't been a an update for their travel wheel in months and months and months. And I've just been waiting, waiting, waiting. And I swear the next time, like either when I get onto the wait, like when I get off the wait list for the larger wheel that I'm on the wait list for, or they post like some of the smaller travel wheels, I'm going to jump on it because I really want one. Could have really used it on this trip. Don't have it. Total bummer. So that's a project I wish I could have on the trip that I don't. Anyway, I will check back with you after I'm back from my trip. And hopefully I will be inserting a little bit footage of some of the things that we did on my trip. So I'll see you back soon. As it turns out, on my glamping trip, I actually didn't knit that much. So I'll end up sharing what I did with you, but also what I've been reading. Because what's happened is that ever since 2020, I've had the worst trouble focusing on reading. I do own a Kindle. I have for a long time. Um, but yeah, I've just had trouble focusing long enough. Uh, with the way my brain works to finish an entire book. I think I've read like three or four books since 2020. And I used to be one of those people that read like 200 books <laughs> per year. So I'm really excited that I found some really trashy and really fun books to read. And I'll share a little bit about them at the end if you'd like to find out more. But for now, let's dive into what I knit in my camping trip. So there's not much to show but I made like an inch progress on my mini effervescent pullover that I'm working on for my kiddo. I forget how much I shared about this before I made, like in the part of the video before, before I went glamping because so much has happened in the world since then and it's been awful and I've been sick. But I knit about an inch while waiting for dinner to cook on the fire and look at the way that the yarn is working up. I love those little spirals of pulling. I am not alternating my yarn because with Wandering Flock, I don't feel that I have to. I never did before. So I'm just pressing straight on with that. I ended up bringing a project I don't think I shared about or I didn't plan to bring it before. I did not end up bringing my work project, this color work guy here, but you can see that in the week since I came back, I've made really good progress. I actually knit to here and then I frogged back all the color work to here to make the edges of the color work end nicely. Um, and then that took some doing in like the spreadsheets to make sure that it looks neat in all the sizes and doesn't have like a weird scraggly edge. And I ended up thinking like I need to have better work, <laughs> work life boundaries. So I did not bring this working guy uh, to glamping even though the effervescent mini will be a pattern one day, probably in the spring, I just, it's for my kids. So it's like, it doesn't really feel like work, but this one definitely is work work. So 
I ended up bringing this project instead, my Ziggy shawl or Ziggy triangle by Layla Raven. It has a hand spun skein that I've been working on. If you watched my video about yarn brands I love, you will have seen this before. This is a gradient skein I spun from Nest Fiber Arts, which I will link below as I will all the things I share in this episode. But it's a gradient. It has, oh, it, you can see it better on this side, but it has like yellows and pinks um, and blues and green with the blues and greens being pretty dominant. And there was a big purple section back here. So I've been working on this for a while. It starts, um, it starts on one end with a little cast on here and then it has I-cord on each side. And it's just a simple triangle shawl. It increases to this size. Obviously this is unblocked, so it will grow quite a lot when I block it. But um, yeah, it goes all the way to this point and then it decreases. So I'm kind of in the middle of decreases. And I know from experience that after this point, it'll go quicker and quicker. This is a knit I've been working on mainly in ballet class, like with my kids in class and at medical appointments and stuff, just waiting. Um, so I've been working on it since it came out, I want to say a month ago. So it's taking me quite a while to get through it. But now I'm on like the decreasing slope of it. I just really want it to be done so I could have it to wear. Um, I don't tend to find a lot of patterns that look really nice and shows off the hand spun yarn um, gradient. Um, there are a lot featuring spin cycle wool um but it's difficult to find a range of like smaller projects for it i know that there's um one designer who designs many many patterns like this but i often want to try to support smaller designers as well so i'm really glad i found this one by Layla raven ziggy jaw or ziggy triangle i'll link it below but um i am knitting that with good wool so this gray part here is good wool by Pearl Soho. It was a design sample they sent me, but we didn't end up going forward with the project. And then the colorful part is the hand spun Rambouille. My nest fiber. I really love how this skein spun up. This one was all joy. I just spun it um, end to end and then um, plied it matching the braid, like the color changes as much as I can, um, making sure that like when I spun it end to end, I split the braid where the color changes line up, like the two braids will look the same. <laughs> so um, it was very easy to make a gradient. I, anytime the gradient like got too off track, like the two plies were the wrong color, like they weren't the same color and it wasn't plying up properly. Anytime that happened, I just pulled out a section and got it back on track. Easy peasy. It was quite easy. I had very little waste. Um, I didn't pull out that much. Highly recommend Nest Fiber if you like to make gradient yarn such as this. So those are the two projects I made some progress on and the rest of my two-day glamping trip I spent reading romance novels. So I'm not a big romance person but um, because of the pandemic, because of everything that's happened the past three years, I decided to give it a chance and I totally understand why so many of you have gotten into it the last few years. I've seen lots of my friends get into this genre and never come out <laughs> over the past few years. It's so relaxing to read. It's so easy on the brain. And it's just, there's something to be said about wholesome, lovely, romantic, easy, easy to digest stories in the times that we're living in. Um, yeah, we were totally off the grid, like pretty much no internet connection. I had to like hold my phone up to the window in the bathroom to download another book because I ran out of books to read. And I ended up reading it on my Kindle and having to do like this whole hotspot connection thing with my phone to get the book onto my Kindle. But I read three books and they are Love and Other Words by Christina Lauren, Same Time Next Summer by Annabelle Mon Monaghan, and my favorite one of the three was Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. Now, I was a little surprised because I borrowed like the top two romance books that were available on Overdrive at my local county library. 
and I borrowed the top two like most popular romance novels that had a copy available um, at home before I went on my trip, um, before I went off grid and it became very difficult to bar borrow books. So I read Love and Other Words and it was okay. I really felt like the main character, um, the main male lead love interest was like he was so interesting and so attractive and adorable as a teenager like i can see why the teenage main character would be super into it but then as an adult like there was nothing there like what have you done in the last decade to deserve this woman like i want to see more here like there just wasn't enough there for me for me to be like yes i will leave my super hot doctor fiance and my future stepkid that i've developed a real relationship with that i'm living with for this guy I was with like 15 years ago, like no way. So that was like, it was fine. It was like a nice, nice mindless read. I got through it very quickly. And then I read Same Time Next Summer, which had almost the same plot. And I was like, why is it that the two books I borrowed from the library, like with no vetting, I just grabbed them because they were the most popular, have almost the same plot, like the same teenage love with, the boy next door at your summer house or vacation house um, that both of them ended in the teen years. They broke up in the teen years uh, due to unforeseen circumstances out of the teen's control. And then eventually as an adult, um, they meet again in like a meet cute. And then they realize eventually that um, what broke them up wasn't something that they couldn't overcome like as adults they realize they can overcome that now and be together and then the main female character leaves her fiance or husband or whatever and gets together with this guy and in both cases i just didn't feel like the guy was doing enough like to deserve this connection like i just people change when you change and you date and you're with a lot of different people in your life like whether platonically or romantically we change and I just think that if you had a connection when you were teens and you meet again, like I wanted to see more of that connection come up again. I don't know. I just didn't feel like those books do enough. So after I read those and complained with my phone in the window to a friend about it, she recommended that I borrow um, Meet Me at the Lake. So I got my phone like very precariously connected back to Libby, back to Overdrive. And I borrowed Mimi at the Lake and I read it and I love this book. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. It's about a woman whose mother has just passed away and she takes over the operations and running of the um, lakeside resort that her mother owned that has been in the family for a long time. And she has trouble getting it out of the financial straits that it's in. And one day her, um, her mother's consultant that she had hired before she passed to get the marketing and the financial issues straightened out shows up and it turns out to be this guy that she had like a one-time meet cute with and spent a day with many years ago and she's like i don't know what to do with this information and the ensuing romance was so good because i feel like they were really developing this relationship like when they met before they didn't really know each other they spent one good day together but you can't base like your whole life off one good day with a date but as the story wears on, they develop this wonderful working and romantic relationship. And I just really believed it. I feel like the adult concerns of these adults was realistic and believable. And I don't know, I don't need my romance novels to be thinky. But if it's so unbelievable and unrealistic that it takes me out of the story, then that gives me pause. I, I need to be able to immerse myself in the story and my critical brain can never stop thinking like, what are they doing here? Like, why do they have so much money that they can just spend all their time at this summer house? Do they not work for a living? Like what's going on? Like, like of course these concerns were somewhat addressed in the other books, but I just wasn't satisfied with them. Like no real person could look like that. So yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Do you read romance novels and do you turn your brain off sufficiently to enjoy it when there's like plot holes or unrealistic, unbelievable situations? Or are you like me and you'll pick on it to the end of time? Um, I really did enjoy all three of these. The first two, they did take me out of the story a little bit because I was like, who are these rich people with entire second houses? And I can't, I can't relate. But the third one, I really love that one. Um, Meet Me at the Lake was super fun. I don't know why it's not more highly rated. It's 
wonderful. I am definitely looking forward to um, to read another book by Carly Fortune. I have it, her other book on hold at the library. And if you're into talking about a romance novel, please give me a comment. Um, I know a lot of knitters read them. So I'd love to know any recommendations you have uh, based on what I said today. But maybe I've said too much. I don't know. Hopefully some of you will have found that segment entertaining. So that's everything I've knit uh, while glamping. And since I got back from glamping, I'm working on this colorwork sweater. Um, this one will be going out the test very soon. Probably by the time you see it, the test call will have gone out to my newsletter. So if you're into test knitting, please don't forget to subscribe to my newsletter and also subscribe to this channel because you can see all the sneak peeks before I even talk about them in the email sometimes just because they're like in the background or I talk about knitting it or whatever. Um, so anyway, please do um, give this video a like if you enjoyed it and let me know what you would like to see next from me. I'll talk to you soon.